Hey guys, so as some of you know, I am working on a book uh, at the moment with a major publisher. So huge, huge project. As such, I'm not releasing as many YouTube videos at the moment just because I just don't have time. Um, but I thought in the meantime, I would just share with you a sneak preview of one of our videos from a theme of the month. Each month, uh, we pick a different theme and then we do, you know, four or five weeks worth of demonstrations. So one per week for that month. So a few months ago, it was house portraits that we were focusing on, which is like one of my most favorite things to draw. And this was the first week of that month. And I demonstrate how I went about how I went about sketching this particular house in ink and watercolor, some of the decisions I made, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I hope you enjoy taking a sneak peek at this video. And if you're interested in joining, then please head over to patreon.com slash Tarias underscore sketchy underscore adventures. The link is in the description below, though, and I really hope you enjoy this demo. So this is one of my favourite subject matters to draw. I think it's probably where I started in regards to drawing, especially when it comes to things somewhat related to urban sketching. There's just so many beautiful photographs you can find on the internet, especially on Pinterest, of interesting houses. And if you want, I have a sketching reference board over on Pinterest, which is divided up into various categories, one of which is interesting houses. So by all means, head over there. I'll leave the link in underneath the video. By all means, head over there and check out the photos I've gotten and sketch from them. So I have today, for this week, I have selected this photograph of an A-frame house. I love A-frame houses. They're just beautiful to look at. I just find them really interesting and um, yeah, so I love drawing them as well. And each week I'm going to try and draw slash paint the house in a different way so that we can open up our minds to sort of various different techniques and how that affects the sketch and that kind of thing. The reference photo is attached in the description below on Patreon. So let's get sketching. I am just using my A5 Etcher sketchbook for this. It is 100% cotton, but don't let that sort of worry you at all. I'm going to probably use various different sketchbooks for the various different tutorials in this month. So the first thing I'm doing is just sketching out the basic shapes very lightly in pencil. In fact, you're probably struggling to see this, but I am just going to switch over to my iPad for a moment because I want to show you exactly what I'm doing and how I approach sketching something like this. So I'm just going to switch over to my iPad here and you can see I've got the photograph here and I'm just going to add a new layer. Don't worry about this, this is just Procreate, this is just an app but it's just a means for me to show you what I'm doing. So with my pencil I made sort of a mark on my page here. I'm going to do it really big for you so you can, so you can see it properly. And whenever I'm drawing a triangle, I try and sort of see what angle the, the line is coming down at. I sort of try and think of it as in a clock face. So where like nine o'clock would be here and six o'clock would be here. And then you've kind of got eight and seven. So I can see that this line is sort of coming down where seven would be on the clock face. I find that a, a nice easy way to think of things. So I kind of put a dot there, sort of think about my lines there, and then I try and put dots where the triangle stops as well. Now this is a, a different one because this edge here doesn't come all the way to the ground, so it kind of stops here. But on my page, I might not necessarily know that. But anyway, so let me just draw in that line there at least. And then this main wall, I look at that as like, you know, a rectangle. And I'm trying to think where that might come, where that might join up with this triangle here. So I'll put in my straight lines there, you know. So it's kind of joining up about there on that triangle. So I'm always using 
visual reference, like visual landmarks to try and figure out where things are. Now, in between where this wall joins here and the top of the triangle, I'd say that this line starts about halfway between those. So I've got that reference point. And then this wall sort of joins up, not quite where the triangle ends, but just a bit inwards. So I bring those up and kind of join them up to make this shape here. Now, again, I'm thinking about my clock over here. So here would be three o'clock. So I reckon that would be more like four o'clock down here. I mean, it's rough. I'm not gonna, you know, agonize over it too much, but it gives you a bit of an idea. Now, I don't really know where to stop this line yet, but I'm still working on my sketch in pencil. So what I'm gonna do here is bring over this line straight across. And then obviously we've got the little wall here and we've got the foliage here. And I can see this foliage is pretty much directly underneath the, the wall. It's just a bit longer than the main wall. So I'm always looking for visual reference marks. Okay, so we've got the end of the house there. And this you're just gonna, you know, you kind of have to eyeball it a bit when it comes to knowing where the end of that house is. You know, maybe you wanna put in this fence first that stops just past this main triangle. And then, and then maybe you wanna draw in the door because that's the next thing that's an, a visual landmark. And then just after that, the rail starts again. You can just guesstimate that distance there and then you can see the end post there and the other one that's just in from it. And then on, onwards from that, I'd move inside the shape to the next bigger shapes. And again, with this arch, with arches, I like to put a, a kind of dot here. I'm doing it bigger because so you can see it. And then where the line straightens out, I put a, a dot there and a dot there so that I know I curve to there and then I come straight down, straight down, line across. I hope that makes sense. So I put a, a dot in the middle of the arch at the top, of, at the apex, I guess you'd call it. And then I put little marks where the arch, the curve of the line stops and then I come straight down. That really helps me draw nice arches. And then under that, I mean, I, as you'll see in my sketch, I don't draw that circle very well, but I, I don't really mind about that. And then you can put in the other windows and little details like that. So that's kind of how I break down the simple shapes and use the visual landmarks within the photograph to try and help me draw the shapes somewhat convincingly. Okay, so if we hop back to the video now, so that's all I'm going to do in terms of the pencil sketching and then I'm moving on to the painting side of things. So for this I'm using my normal White Knights watercolour set. I am going to do a video on this just to tell you exactly what colours are in here and so that you can see what colours they are because I realised I probably did something like that on YouTube a long time ago but I think someone mentioned it a little while back and it would be possibly interesting for you guys to know what my set contains and what I generally like to use. So as you might be able to tell, I am not trying to paint within the lines here. I slapped down a bit of Indian gold there. I want to be nice and bright with this sketch. And I'm using a half inch flat brush as well, just to try and help me not be too precise. It's good for keeping things like straight lines and stuff like that, but because it's quite big and this sketch is quite small, I don't know, I just felt like it was a brush that would help me not be too precise because I want to give this sketch a nice loose feeling. That's what I'm going for in this particular sketch for this week. I want it to feel nice and loose and not too, you know, precise. So I laid down some Payne's Gray for the main body of the house there. And then for the main wall, I had like kind of a sepia color. And I really like how the Indian gold is bleeding into the Payne's gray over on the left there. That's a really nice effect. And now I'm just adding in the foliage as well. So I'm using an Indian yellow 
mixed with a bit of green in my set and it always makes a lovely color for foliage. I'm going to come back later on to give that some more depth, but at the moment I'm just sort of focusing on getting some basic colors in. And again, I don't mind that that green foliage is bleeding into the ground. I just think it's going to make a lovely effect later when I come to draw on top of it. If you'd like to see a bit more of this kind of technique where essentially you're laying down the paint first and then drawing on top, then do check out the theme of the month called Paint First, Draw Later, where I do quite a lot of these, well, four of these demonstrations where you paint first and then draw on top. So now I'm coming in to paint the trees in the background. And again, this is where a flat brush kind of comes into its own. Again, I'm trying to be loose, creating broken lines, trying to sort of show that there's, you know, some light, uh, lighter areas of the tree trunk and darker areas of the tree trunk. It also infers a bit of texture as well. So I'm not painting these one flat color. I think it looks much nicer when you can sort of show a bit of a broken line. It just gives it just gives it a bit more visual interest. So I've just removed the clip there from my sketchbook because it was getting in my way. Because this is a 100% cotton paper, it's not sort of curling up like maybe a lighter weight or a cellulose paper might do. But again, don't, don't worry about the, the fact that this is 100% cotton. I very rarely use 100% cotton. I just so happen to have this sketchbook. And it was kind of the size that I wanted to use for this particular demonstration. I haven't done extensive tests on the various papers, but I do feel like on this 100% cotton paper, the, the paint just bleeds in together really nicely. So it's really lovely for wet and wet techniques. Now I've waited for the paint to dry and I'm coming in with my fountain pen. There's no real reason I'm using a fountain pen here, to be honest. It's just what I felt like using. I sometimes feel like I can draw looser with a fountain pen. And notice how I'm holding the fountain pen quite far back. I'm not holding it down by the nib like I would if I was writing something. Again, this just helps you to stay a bit looser and it helps you to use more of your arm so that you're not drawing from your fingers or even from your wrists. You can actually draw more from your arm and again that just helps you be a bit looser and, and flow across the page a bit easier. I recommend getting some printer paper or something like that and experimenting with drawing like long lines and how it affects your line if you're holding the pen right near the nib versus, and this is for any pen, this is not just a fountain pen, this is for fine liners as well, versus holding the pen further back. The only thing with fine liners is that they work on a different sort of angle. I find with fine liners, I generally have to hold them up a bit more upright than I would with a fountain pen. So that's why sometimes a fountain pen can be easier to draw with your whole arm. This particular fountain pen is a Twasabi Eco. It has an extra fine nib. And as with all of my fountain pens, it's filled with platinum carbon ink. It's the only ink I've ever tried, uh, but it does the job, so I've never really tried anything else. I particularly like this pen versus the Lamy Safaris I have because I know whenever I pick it up, no matter if it's been a month since I've used it, it will always work. And unfortunately, the Lamys just don't seem to do the same. I don't know if it's something I'm doing wrong, <laughs> but... Um, I tried out all of my pens before doing this and the only one that was like up and running was the Tosabi Eco, so I didn't want to mess around. But I also just really love drawing with this pen. I'm, yeah, it was an, an accidental purchase really, but it's just been a really great pen. I've recommended it to quite a lot of people and a lot of those people completely agree that it's a really good, good pen. So if you are looking for a fountain pen or you're looking for an upgrade from a Lamy Safari, because it's a tiny bit more expensive, not too much, but it's a tiny bit more expensive, then uh, yeah, this is a good one. Just note it doesn't hold cartridges, so it is you can only fill it up from an ink bottle because the entire body of the pen is the, com is the converter, so the end twists and sucks up the ink from the bottle, So it, which is great because it holds so much ink. The entire body of the pen can hold ink. So anyway, enough about the pen. <laughs> so I'm just drawing over the top of the paint. Again, I'm not trying to be too precise. I don't want to follow the paint 
as you can see, there's, you know, various different wet and wet uh, areas of paint that's not within the shape, but that helps to give that loose look. So by its nature, obviously adding the lines over the top of the paint is sort of tightening things up a bit. And this is where, you know, it gets less loose, I suppose, because maybe my lines are slightly more precise, but I kind of like that marriage of the loose paint and then the slightly tighter lines. Although you'll notice I'm definitely not being precise. That circular window under the arch one is, <laughs> is not very circular. <laughs> but there's only so much you can do freehand anyway. And, and again, I just wanted this to be a really fun sketch. I think overall this took me 45 minutes, um, but obviously I did have to wait for paint to dry before drawing on top, which can vary depending on your climate, depending on the paper you're using, and depending on how much water you used on the page too. So here I'm just adding in some horizontal lines on the orange bit of the house on the left there. I wouldn't necessarily always draw in every brick on a house, but I feel like because this has got a loose vibe in regards to painting, I think adding quite a bit of detail in terms of the bricks with the pen could be a quite, again, quite a nice counterbalance. And also it's quite a basic little sketch, so I think sometimes a bit more detail, especially in terms of textures, when there is quite a variety of textures, can really help it to pop. But again, you can see I'm not being too precise with this, I am being quite quick and rough with it. And I'm going to come into the main wall there and add in some horizontal lines for the bricks. And then I could, thought I could see in the photograph, it's a bit difficult to tell because it's quite dark, but I thought I could tell that the sort of inner walls where the door is and stuff have like wooden slats. I don't know if that's the right word, but made from like wooden panels or wooden strips. So... I thought that would be nice because that's vertical lines running downwards as opposed to the horizontal lines of the bricks. So I thought that could be a nice addition. So I've only put a few of them in at the moment. Sometimes I do that and I'll come back to it later. Uh, I don't know why I do that. <laughs> don't worry if you find that you're not very systematic in sketching, it's fine, it's art. So you can just start one bit and then forget it and leave it and start another bit and come back to it later. There's, there's no harm in doing that. So here I've picked up a watercolor pencil in this kind of nice bright orangey brown color. And there's quite a lot of this color throughout the sketch. So I thought it'd be really nice to tie everything in by using this one color. And you can notice I'm using it quite hard on my page. Uh, <laughs> the camera is shaking a bit there, but I just wanted to get really bold kind of vibrant lines in there again. I think this is a nice counterpoint to the loose wet in wet paint effect in the background. And using this one colour across the sketch really ties everything together. And now I'm coming in with a greenish watercolour pencil because I felt like the parts in the background behind the main wall, they had like a bit of a green tinge to them. So I kind of wanted to emphasize that. I really wish I hadn't colored over where the Indian yellow blends in with the Payne's gray at the bottom there. I thought that was a really nice paint effect and I feel like I might've covered it up a bit too much. So, you know, that's something that I'm going to take away from this sketch to, rem to remind myself next time I do something like this to try and leave those spontaneous areas of wet and wet paint uh, a bit more exposed because they add the, the nice kind of visual interest. So as I always say, every sketch is a learning opportunity. It's always an experiment. So that's just one evaluation point that I'm going to take forward uh, for when I do another sketch like this. 
So I really like the effect of overlaying watercolour pencils on top of watercolour paint. It can be really nice. And I'm not going to paint over this. So I'm not going to activate the watercolour pencil with, with water or anything like that. It can just add a nice texture over the watercolour paint. Now this is hot press paper, so it is smooth. That's what I prefer to use watercolour pencils on. So now I've got my uh, trusty old black brush pen out and I'm just seeing where I can add in some intense blacks. This might not necessarily be the right stage in the sketching process to do this, but I just felt like I wanted to get some solid blacks into the sketch because I think it might inform my decision on what I do in various parts of the sketch. So for example, this arch window, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to color the whole thing in black. And then I stepped away and I was like, no, I don't think that's the right idea. So I ended up doing the inner frame black. And then I really wanted to try and get this interesting reflection into the top window because I feel like that's a bit of storytelling in this sketch. If you open up the reference photograph, you'll be able to see this better, but there's a nice reflection in that big window of trees. So obviously this house is entirely surrounded by trees because the window's reflecting trees opposite. Just tiny little detail like that tells a bit more about the story, about the environment that this house is sat in. So that's what I mean when I say storytelling. So painting in or colouring in this entire window black would have been a bit of a missed opportunity, I think. So what I'm doing is I'm just... I start with a light green at the top, then a bit of a darker green, and then a Payne's grey towards the bottom because it's a very dark reflection at the bottom of the window. So I'm hoping that that will dry up nicely and it will read a bit better. At the moment, I think I've gone in quite heavily with the Payne's grey at the bottom of the window. And in fact, I'm actually going to dry my brush off a bit because it's still very wet in that Payne's grey area. And I'm just going to try and soak up some of the the water and the pigment just to see if it can dry a bit lighter and it also adds a bit of texture as well. And I think now that's just added a really nice focal point to the sketch. I'm, I'm really happy I made that decision. I was so close to just the kind of quite lazily, I must admit, quite lazily uh, colouring in that window black with the brush pen. I luckily caught myself in time to, <laughs> to not do that. So I just added in a bit of a darker shade of green at the bottom of those bushes to try and give them a bit more shape and depth. And now I've gone in with an even darker version of green. So I've used green and indigo mixed together, which creates a really beautiful, deep, dark green, almost probably like a perylene green or something like that. I don't know. And put that in right at the base of the, the foliage and that sort of anchors it to the ground. It gives it a nice shadow on the ground. Okay, I'm deciding now to come in and tackle this background, which is part of the reason that I chose this photograph. A, I like the A-frame house, but B, I was like, ooh, I really want to do like a wet in wet, nice background of all this foliage, you know? I think that would look really cool, especially with the strong vertical lines of some of the tree trunks. Now you'll notice for the tree trunks, I didn't use brown. I didn't want to be, I didn't want to compete with the browns in the house. So I used a bit more of a grayer kind of color. I think it's almost like a purpley gray that I mixed. I think it was just remnants that was on my palette, to be honest with you. I do that quite often, especially for neutrals. I think you can find interesting neutral colors from just sort of mixing up random bits that you've got left on your palette. That's why my palette is never clean. <laughs> So I'm trying to vary the, the color of green every time I go back into the sketch. So right now you'll see that it's much more yellowy green. And then when I go back to my palette, I'm just going to dab in a bit more green to the yellowy green. And then it, you know, it varies the, the color of the foliage as you're working through it which A, is much more interesting, but B, it's you know, more realistic as well. And notice how I'm not doing a flat color. I'm not doing a flat wash or a block of color. I'm really sort of just dabbing the brush on the, on the paper, making random brush strokes. This obviously is a flat brush, so I don't want my brush strokes to look too straight and flat. So I'm just trying to use the brush at different angles and just dab in the paint and also wet and wet and let the paint do its own thing. Just try and create some randomness. I'm also trying to leave a bit of white space as well in between my strokes. 
because you want to get that effect that the foliage is not one solid wall of green. There is some light poking through. And arguably, I haven't really done that enough in the background. I think maybe I potentially have painted in a bit too much green, but it, it's fine, you know. But that's something to look out for when you're trying this out. And naturally, the colours towards the top of the foliage are probably going to be lighter, a lighter green or a lighter or like a yellowy colour because that's where the sunlight is hitting on them. And the foliage towards the bottom of the scene is going to be a darker green. And that's where you're going to have more shadows because it's on the ground and the sun probably isn't hitting those areas of, of the foliage. What you can also do is when you're looking at the reference photo, you can squint your eyes and that removes the details of the photograph and can help you identify where the dark areas of the photo are. And that's a really nice little trick to help you figure out where to put shadows. So I'm leaving the background where it is at the moment. I think it's looking okay. I might add in a few more darker areas later on when it's dry. And now I'm coming back in with my fountain pen and continuing with those vertical stripes that I just stopped doing earlier. <laughs> and now I'm continuing the vertical stripes over on the left hand side too. I was having a bit of an issue with uh, my fountain pen going over the top of the watercolour pencil in this area for some reason so that's why I switched over to a fine liner just to see if that would work a bit better. Now I'm just I'm just sort of hopping around the sketch really just trying to add in more details more contrast just any little bits that I've missed And now I am going to come in with a thicker lined pen and I just want to add some line weight to certain areas. So I really want this main wall to stand forward because the other areas to the right and left of it are receded. So I just want to make it more obvious that that main wall is standing further forward. And using thick lines can help you do this. So I also add thick lines to areas where there might be a bit of shadow as well. So it might be a bit too thin to add any watercolour or sort of markers or anything like that. But it would benefit from a thicker line just to show that it's got a bit of depth. And I also like to add thick lines underneath uh, roof edges, like on the left hand side there. And also underneath the window frames as well. That just gives them a bit of visual weight where there might be, a, again, a little bit of a, a ledge poking out and therefore there would be a tiny bit of a shadow underneath that ledge. It's really easy to overdo the thicker lines and then you end up with thick lines on the entirety of your sketch. So you do have to uh, try and show a bit of restraint at this stage, but it, it, it does add quite a nice visual element to the sketch. So I do recommend trying this out. And now I'm just going to come back in and very roughly put in these bricks. I was thinking maybe just put some in and then I think I ended up doing the entire wall. <laughs> but you can see I'm just doing it very loosely, very quickly. So now I just wanted to add a tiny bit more dark splodges to the background. So I'm just using my, my round brush here, just thought it might be easier to get into some of these areas with the point, uh, just, to, just to adding a bit of the darker green into the situation. 
And now I've got my Rosemary & Co dagger brush, which is quite a nice small brush and can get into some finer areas. And very loosely and sort of carefully, I'm just adding in a bit of a darker shade of the of the purpley gray color, just to give the tree trunks a tiny bit of depth. I don't want to overdo it because I don't want to draw the attention away from the house and into the background, but I just felt like I wanted to add a bit more interest into those tree trunks and just show that they've got a bit more dimension. So you can see I'm just being super loose with it. And then while I'm here, I'm just adding in a few little shadow variations into the wall and then also just a few different color variations into those bricks on the main wall, which I can see that happens on the photograph. And just tiny little details like this can really bring your sketch to life. And then I'm just going around and adding a darker color underneath this roof area just to give a bit of shadow. So it's all just these little finishing touches now just to try and just get a bit more depth, uh, add in a few shadows and just bring it to life a bit more. Now I did think that this was basically done and I was about to leave it there. And then I took one more look at things. I think I maybe went into the kitchen, came back, took one more look at things. And I was like, do you know what? I actually need to put some heavy shadows either side of this main wall. Really show that those other walls are receded back. And yeah, that, so again, squinting my eye at the photograph, I was like, those areas are dark, very, very dark. So it can be a bit scary to come in and paint like a dark kind of shadow shape over your sketch. But as you will be able to see, this brings the whole thing to life. So I'm glad that I didn't miss this step. I'm glad that I came back and I was like, oh, that's what's missing from this. Because immediately it pushes that main wall forward so much. You see what a difference that makes now. So it was a bit tricky because I'd obviously used watercolour pencil on that bit. So I was a bit worried about it activating it and getting quite muddy um, and stuff like that. But I think it actually came out really nicely and it worked. It worked well. So now I decided that I just wanted to put a thicker line on the edge of this roof here to bring it forward. But to be honest with you, I don't think I really needed to do that. And I'm not really sure it adds anything. In fact, I'm not sure if I like it. So again, that's my other evaluation point is that that probably didn't need to happen. I understood, I understand why I decided to do that because obviously wanted to show that that roof edge was in front, but I just don't think that that thick line just needed to be there, to be honest. One thing I am loving and I'm super happy that I did is the reflections in that big arch window. I think that really brings the whole thing to life. So that's one accidental decision I made that I'm really happy with. <laughs> so that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I hope I've explained things well and that you can follow along with this. Again, the reference photo is attached and I'd really love to see your sketches if you have a go at this one. And if you have any questions, comments, or want any advice or anything like that, just leave me a comment below or send me a message through Patreon and I will respond as quickly as possible and I'd be happy to help. So I hope this one was really fun and interesting and I look forward to showing you guys what I've got for you next week.